Yeah. We're good. Yeah. All right. Hopefully, hopefully we won't that, be. That's good. That's, yeah, that's good. Hopefully we won't be dealing with the. Uh, oh, it just went off. Hopefully we won't be dealing with um, the freezing part that we had yeah. earlier today. So uh, hello everyone. Um, it is look at that six o'clock on the dot. I was early today. Uh, this evening, I, I tell you, we just uh, had some good some good moments. Uh, I just notified several individuals of our promotion uh, that they were being promoted to the rank of sergeant. It's a very very hard hard list, and it's a very very hard discussion uh, and hard choices. But that's a good thing. So it's important to me that I wanted to make some notifications before the before the holiday, and and uh, I, I anticipate that we'll have some more some more as well but that's important leadership leadership matters and getting the people in the right place it, it, so that, that was a that was a good good opportunity there's nothing the chief likes better than, than making promotions so i was glad to be able to spend some time with them and just appreciate them for what they do so um if anyone is is uh, out there listening if somebody could just let me know we had some issues where it froze up a little bit earlier how we sound and i want to make sure that the video is rolling so i i apologize for some of those Issues. I don't think it was on our end, but I don't want to. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to. Uh, uh, I, I hope that it comes through clearer uh, on this session. So, very good. Julie, hello. Glad to, glad glad to see you here. Thank you. Thank you for 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 being here. So we had a really good. Uh, I felt like we had a good session uh, this afternoon. Some good conversations. Some good questions. We talked about. Um, We'll try to do the, the, the same thing. Um, we can talk about some different topics or, or the same, but uh, what I like to do is kind of give a status of sounds good in Arizona. That's what I'm, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate appreciate you being here, my friends. Good to see you. Um, Arizona, what's going on in Arizona? Is it like, uh, it's probably a little warmer in Arizona than it is here in, 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 in Newport News. What's going on in Arizona, my friend? Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about kind of where the where the Roderick. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's kind of where the city is right now. Some of the challenges we're having. Uh, we had a rough week. Uh, with uh, we lost uh, three three individuals, three citizens in our our community due to gun violence. Uh, we had, we were and still are having a really good last quarter of the year. Some things started to turn around, um, uh, but we'll talk a little bit about that as the evening goes on. Um, and then, of course, about a little safety about the holiday season. I cannot believe that that Christmas is is Saturday. Um, seems like we were just having thanks Thanksgiving um, just last week, and, and here we are. Uh, and, and New Year's, of course, right around the corner. And then we're going to start to a to a new year. So, uh, Roderick, I'm 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 doing okay. Um, you know, I will tell you, last week was a long week, and we got some bad news internally here Sunday. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we lost one of the members of our family, and uh, here in the, in the police department. So we'll we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but I just appreciate those that uh, logged in earlier, and we spent some time together, and and for for you spending some time with me this evening. So I'm, I will do my very best to hit each each post that comes through. If I miss any, please charge it to my heart. Uh, it is not my intent. And and uh, Julie is working with me tonight. So anything we miss, we'll go back at the end. And anything we miss, we'll we'll. We'll send a direct message too, but it's my intent to try to hit every single post that that comes through. Uh, so, Roderick, I thank you, thank you for that, sir. Kenny, um, go back down. Just can't. Uh, Chief, you're doing. Uh, Kenny, thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Um, believe me, it is a it is a whole department effort, sworn and civilian both. Uh, but I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Steve, good to, good good here. And oh, there you go, former and then Newport News Fire Department fire. Well, Steve, I appreciate your service. I hope I hope things are all good in Northern Virginia. I imagine the traffic's a little heavier up there than it is than it is here in, in the Hampton Roads area. But um, wishing you and your family a very very happy holiday and Merry Christmas, and uh, thank you for your, your service and time here, my friend. Uh, Susan, Merry Christmas, Chief, to all in Newport News. Thank you. Susan, thank you very much. Uh, that matters a lot. That means a lot. Um, yeah, the holiday seasons are, are very very special, but I also know it can be very challenging and hard. For some families, um, some that are facing um, that might not be as fortunate, or facing financial challenges, um, I'll tell you. You know, I, I don't want to. Uh, no names, but I, I would. We uh, there's an organization we work with. Um, we've had a good relationship with, 
and yesterday several toys were delivered to the police department. Uh, bicycles, toys and bags. Um, it wasn't just, I mean, it took about eight officers to carry everything in. Um, and yesterday evening we were able to take those toys to a hospital to some children that were um, in the hospital. And, and, and uh, I didn't even think, I didn't even think about this. Chief Grinstead was talking to me about it, that uh, some grandparents that are in the hospital and their grandkids come to see them, right? Or their family comes to see them. Um, and they're unable to get out and, and get a gift to give to their grandchildren. That we were able to, to give gifts to, uh, to some uh, senior citizens, if you will. And so when their grandchildren come, that they will be able to hand them something from their hospital bed to their, their grandchild. And, and I had never even thought of that angle, uh, but Chief Grinstead uh, got to play a big role in that. And um, I hope it brightens up. Uh, I just, I just think, I just think that at the end of the day, I think that's what we do in this profession, uh, and and to have the opportunity. So um, I wouldn't, didn't want to put any organization for what they did. But it was very touching. Like I said, we had about seven or eight officers that unloaded things yesterday morning, and they were able to be delivered. And uh, I hope it brings joy and and, and a little bit, maybe a smile um, to some of those in the Christmas season. Um, uh, Lori, um, we really appreciate your quick response and heart. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I'll tell you the officers that were working up there at the basketball game and in the situation that happened at Mitchell High School with the loss of a, a, a teenager in our city. Um, you know, that is our youth. Uh, to me, that is our, our best asset, um, our young people, our children. And it was very, very tragic. I thought the officers did an amazing job. Um, I will tell you, the officers that rendered first aid, uh, they were they were shooken up. It was hard for them. Uh, some of the SROs there, and and uh, we've made sure reached out to have some uh, just meet with a department psychologist for no other reason that I care about them. All right, for the officers that were there and handled the the scene, it's very very tragic. I thought the students did an amazing job in cooperating with law enforcement, the teachers. We have a great relationship with our schools in Newport News and Dr. Parker and Rashad Wright. Uh, they were both there. Several members, if not the whole school board, was there. Um, and they just helped us coordinate getting families out of the parking lot and being able to process the, the, the scene and then, um, you know, for a very, very tragic event. Um, but an arrest was made very, very quickly. Now, I'm, 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 I want to be clear that that individual, there's still a court process to go through. There's still a case and investigation ongoing. Um, and, and everyone has the right to, to a, 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 a decision, a trial, whether jury by judge. Um, but I just, just from what the way I saw the officers react and interact, I, I just, I thought it was amazing. So I cannot be more, more impressed with them. And, and thank you so much for that post. That means a lot. Anna says you freeze up again. However, we know you're, <laughs> you're. Well, thank you, Anna. Anna, do you think it might be your computer? Do you think it could be yours? I mean, are you trying to look at it on your phone or are you looking at it on the screen? But I don't know. It could be me. But I can tell you this. I'm not. I'm not touching anything electrical. I'm not moving anything. They tell me like this is where you sit. Don't touch anything. So I, I'm I'm not. But um, Anna, thank you. I, I if, if if we are freezing up and there's bad audio, I apologize. I'm going to push through, and um, so maybe if, if it's if other people are having trouble hearing, or we're freezing up, um, let me know. So now Tia says it's freezing up. Maybe I'm just pausing and throwing everyone off. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Um, Kevin, I'm with, uh, have rode with your department in the past with an old friend. Enjoy your videos. Wow. Kevin, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank you. And, and look, listen, um, if we are freezing up, I apologize. I, I, I wish I was a whiz at how to fix these, but yeah. I'm, I'm not. And uh, so I apologize. Um, you, there's uh, Chris. Christina. Did I miss Christina? Yeah. Christ Just another, <laughs> you know, Christina, it's, it's funny, you know, I'm not even sure I'm going to mention his name again, but uh, uh, Chief Grinstead, there was an individual, we were on here earlier and an individual chimed in and talked about uh, Chief Grinstead was her SRO. And uh, so I was, I was giving him a hard time about that. And um, yeah, absolutely. He is a tremendous, tremendous. Um, uh, Anna Whalen, she said. Yeah, what, it could be the thought. I don't know. Yeah. 
Uh, Steve, thank you, my friend. Uh, uh, slow down for me, Joel. Cat, yeah. uh, hey, Chief. It was nice seeing you at the Chief. It was good, Cat. It was very good seeing you. I appreciate you being there. You know, uh, Captain Bullhurst, who is now Chief Bullhurst. I actually had a conversation with him today. One of the individuals we selected to be promoted. Um, I actually called him on the phone. It's a chief in Albemarle, North Carolina. I called him on the phone, and he was able to, uh, over the over the phone, just tell tell the young man congratulations for being promoted. Uh, he is a class act. Our loss is Albemarle, North Carolina's gain. Um, you know, we've had three chiefs in, in just in about a period of 13 months be selected from this department: uh, Chief uh, Hudgens and Chief Bullhurst and and Chief Randall down in Pensacola, Chief Hudgens in Pikeville. Just uh, Pineville, North Carolina, just just excellent, and they left big big footprints here. They made a big impact on this community, and I know they'll do great things for their ad. I, I cannot be cannot be more impressed with those individuals, and they absolutely deserve it. Let's talk a little bit. Uh, Christine, uh, it's fine on my. There we go. All right, somebody says it's working. Good, good, good. Uh, Lori, mine is running smoothly, no freezing. Ah, there we go. Linda, keep doing what you're doing. Remain steadfast. Kudos to the department in doing it. Wow, I really appreciate that, uh, Linda. Thank you. Uh, so we talked a little bit, a um, couple of things. We had our promotion ceremony last week, last Friday. We promoted our newest assistant chief, Captain, uh, uh, former Captain Eric Hires, and now Assistant Chief Eric Hires. We promoted uh, three, uh, three captains, um, lieutenants, and sergeants. Uh, our, our, and, sar and, and lieutenants. We did. We just selected some sergeants. I didn't. I was not able to get the sergeant process in that time frame. So our selections. We had uh, some civilian that were promoted. Our assistant chief, uh, captains, and lieutenants. Um, so we will have another promotion ceremony, uh, most likely in January, for our new sergeants. Um, I know some things get tight in, in the month of January. I want to make sure we do our, our year-end press conference and talk about the, our, our kind of give an update to the community about uh, our numbers for the year. Uh, I'm not happy with where we ended. Um, we've had some challenges and it's important to look back and see why we're there. Um, uh, then when I look around the Hampton Roads area, um, I want to compare us to other cities. Um, when I say compare us, I, I, I mean, are other, see, other cities seeing a spike in violence? Are they seeing uh, guns seized? You know, what are other cities seeing around our, our, our the Hampton Roads area in our state and really across our country? And what I have seen looks to be very, very similar. Um, so there, there's definitely some challenges. We have some um, shortages in our department. We're authorized uh, 470 officers in the Newport News Police Department, and we're down about 43, 44, 45. And, and the reason a couple, too, is they've indicated that they may be taking another position but just haven't signed the paperwork yet. But at, at best, or I guess at worst, uh, would be about 45 officers down. So um, we have acting recruitment. Um, so please, so here's the plug, right? See how I've walked us right in there? Here's the plug. Um, I, we're doing some of these TikTok videos. We have got a lot of young people who are very, very creative. Uh, I want to draw talent to this department, right? We'll teach people how to write reports, use everything on this uniform and our duty belt and how to, how to, how to drive and work the computer system. Uh, but what I can't teach people is to have a heart. For others, and that, that's what I want to attract here. I, I will tell you, I try to run this department like a family, um, sworn and civilian both. People who come and join this organization, I don't look at them as as a code number or, or or just a number. They become part of this family, and then their family is part of our extended family. I want to get to know them. I want to hear about birthdays and graduations and how somebody did playing sports, how somebody did at the in the ballet. What do they What did they do at camp? Uh, you know, who do they, who are they cheering for? How they do in their track meet? Um, how's their football team doing? I want to hear those things. So I, people that come here, I, I want them to feel part of this family, not please. We argue and fight, disagree, just like any family. But at the end of the day, we argue about how do we best serve this community? How do we take care of the 185, 190,000 citizens that live in Newport News and improve the quality of life in this city to give the best services? We don't always get it right. We make our mistakes. I certainly make my share of mistakes, but I, I, I'm trying to create an atmosphere in this department that it's okay to say that we're sorry, to be open and transparent and admit when we make those mistakes or when we should have done better or could have done better or that we go back and look at some things that, hey, the next time this would improve our process. We always try to evaluate ourselves and do better. Um, 
So for any citizen that we haven't, that you feel or that we haven't uh, crossed, the finish, crossed the finish line or done the best job or you didn't get a follow-up call right away or uh, a particular situation, I want to apologize for that. Uh, it is not our intent. Uh, we are trying to do and continue to do the best we can. Um, I will tell you, it is an ongoing process. Technology advances, laws change. Um, but I am impressed and I am thankful. I believe this city is very, very blessed for the men and women who raised their right hand and joined this police department to serve. And I, and I will say, not, even, not only here in Newport News, but in the Hampton Roads area across the state and this country, those that put this uniform on and badge and take time away from their families, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that miss holidays and events to serve others, that, that, that to me, it, it, I need them to know their value. They matter, right? Our citizens matter. And I'm trying to bring people into this organization who care about other people. That, that's important. Um, where do they go? Don, Don. Um, pray you all have a safe and blessed Christmas, sworn in civilian volunteers. Absolutely. Um, uh, Mr. Reed is one of our uh, value chaplains. Uh, great job at the promotion ceremony uh, last week, and I appreciate you. Uh, you mean a lot to me, my friend, and I, I thank you for that. Switch to laptop working much better, but still has an occasional pause. Tina, that, those are just ones I'm doing on purpose. I'm just playing. Uh, Tia, those are, I'm just, no. Thank you for that. Thanks for sharing. Um, so as we, as we, as we move forward, um, because of those promotions last week, I uh, created some vacancies and now we have made some selections for uh, Sarge and we'll be getting that list published pretty quickly, but I want to, um, myself and the other chiefs, I want to personally call those that we could not promote right now, but I do think there's some other opportunities that we will have very, very shortly. And like I said, it was a, it was a great list. Um, there's a lot of talent here. There's a lot of talent. Um, recruiting is something we're continuing to do. Uh, we're, uh, we have uh, signs up um, you know as we talk about what do you want to bring into the department chief I'm looking for change makers right people to come in and hey we're going to improve on what's already there we're going to take it to the next level so uh, our phrase right now is is our slogan is to be a change maker join this department and improve it help us make changes let us be help us be better tomorrow than we are today um, and we're definitely better today than we were yesterday <coughs> I apologize um, but we're, we're trying all, all trying to get our message out on social media. We're re reaching out to we reached out to a lot of colleges uh, across the uh, the region here uh, surrounding Virginia and colleges in Virginia. Uh, you know, focusing with our our, our outstanding servicemen and women that ser serve this country. Uh, earlier today, there was a young man who I believe his name was William that talked about after he gets out of the military, would like to continue his service and and join us our department. We have a buddy program, right? Where if you want to join. The Newport News Police Department, you and a friend, we're going to get you to work in the same precinct so you can have that camaraderie. That's important, right? I want you to come in and, and be able to work in the same precinct around each other. I mean, I get you on the same shift. I mean, I get you in the same car, but I want you to be able to have that, that closeness. So those are the things that we're looking for. Uh, my hope is to have a class in January of 30 individuals. So that'll still put us uh, down about 15, uh, but then we'll have another class right behind in March, people that, you know, first of the new year and making some decisions. Um, but that, that class of, of, of 30 is what I'm shooting for in, in, in January is going to be a big, a big push for us. And I think we're right now down about right about 16 in that class. So we've got about 30 more days to get where I want us to be before we start that academy. Uh, Charles, Chief, thanks for you and your officers that took the time to play soccer with Charlie and his team. Thanks for all that you do. Have a happy and safe holiday. So um, I will tell you, my friend, uh, thank you, sir. Thanks for uh, calling and helping us get that set up and, and laid out and arranged. But uh, um, a young man I made a promise to uh, when I saw him recover that challenged him to, a, to a, his team to a soccer game against some police officers. Now, I'm a baseball guy. I enjoy basketball and football. I didn't grow up playing soccer, but I, I ran my mouth a little bit. I ran, I pushed it a little bit. And uh, so we played this um, team. They, um, they said they were like, you know, 12, 10, 11, 12, 13, but I don't know. It looked like there might have been some college players. And, and I don't know if she's listening, but I'll tell you what. Jasmine, Jasmine tried to, to push me around that field. I held my own. Jasmine, get up and give me mean looks. I held my own. I might have even bumped Jasmine a few times. Let her know I'm the chief of police in this city on this soccer field. I may not know how to kick that soccer ball, but I'm out here. I think she laughed at me one time. I think I caught her. 
Um, it's a good thing some people got in between because me and Jasmine, I think Jasmine was about 13, 12, 13 years old, telling me uh, she was taking me down. You believe that? So, um, yeah, we had a great time playing soccer. It was a great, great event. Uh, it did solidify that I'm out of shape and that uh, that's, a, that's a hard sport. But we had a really good time, and I appreciate the uh, officers and family that came out to, to watch. Jasmine, I'm looking for you. I'm going to find out. I'm going to find you, Jasmine. Uh, but, Mr. Foley, thank you so much for all that you did. I greatly appreciate that. Marina, you're appreciated, and I know the shootings can weigh on your heart. But you're doing really, really good in the city of Newport News. Thank you and all the officers. Marina, I appreciate that. It does. It does weigh on my heart. You know, I've been doing this job almost 30 years, and I can tell you, um, anytime you see a family suffer loss, whether it's a a traffic accident, um, uh, but but a homicide is it, it yeah, um, and it ranges, right? Some families are thankful uh, for what we do, and 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 others are frustrated and upset because they can't lash out at the individual who committed that that horrible, tragic act, and and then some just break down. Uh, I've held fathers and, and brothers, sisters, family members, mothers who cried on my shoulder and uh, with pastors as they pray and you know it, it does but but I will tell you when I talk about having a passion for people um, that, that that I feel that you know my upbringing, my faith, um, the way God has, has blessed this city and allowed me to serve here as the chief of police um, you know I don't take it for granted and, and I'm looking for people that have those same, um, compassion, right? Empathy. Uh, I want I want this police department to be known that the department that cares about its community that has great compassion. And I know other departments and, and do. I'm just talking about Newport News Police Department. The best at, best assets we have are our community, our people, uh, the citizens that live, work, play, raise a family, and the youth of this city. Any event that you see us do, any event you see us do, um, promotion ceremony, award ceremony. Uh, graduation from the academy, our, our memorial services. If you go back and look for the last three and a half years, every one we've had that I've been here as the chief, there's a youth that's a guest speaker. One of our high school students, whether we're, they're, they're giving a, a speech, others that are playing the violin or, or singing, I do that because I want the youth of this city to know that they matter to me, that they're valued. But I also want the youth of this city to know how much this department values them I want this department to know how much that I value youth. That's our future. They drive me crazy sometimes. We have a young adult police commissioner programs, uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior from every high school. That's 24. We just had our swearing in ceremony about two weeks ago. Uh, how we got 27 or 28, I don't know how Lieutenant Morgan swayed that. I think a couple snuck in. We got the biggest class we've ever had. High school students hanging out with police officers. Don't tell me we can't have conversations. We talk differently, we look at things differently, but we talk about diversity, we talk about equality, we talk about empathy and understanding, we talk about gun violence, we talk about what they expect from their department, we talk about what our department expects from our youth. And I'll tell you, when you talk about gun violence today, the youth are critical to have at the table. They're critical to have at the table. And I'm proud of every one of those individuals that, that raised their right hand, they were sworn in by Judge Flyth, our new, one of our newest circuit court judges, they took the oath to, to serve the city, and I was impressed. I'm, I'm impressed by them. I love those guys, man. They there's even ones that have gone through the program and graduated. One we have working on the police department uh, in the field. One we have working over in property and evidence. And I'll tell you, I won't mention the name, but one had a pretty good job and called and said, "Chief, I'm just not happy. I want to come back to work for people who care about me." And I, that choked me up. That choked me up. I want the youth of this city to know that they matter to me. I. I think they're some of the most talented people, right? And I'm not going to judge judge them by a couple that make decisions. I think it's important for us to look at some of those decisions. When I talk about making decisions, those that are problem-oriented, right, that may choose to join a group or a gang to, to focus on and uh, to be a part of. So I don't think anybody just wakes up and decides to do that. You know, is it they don't feel loved, they don't, they don't feel appreciated, they don't feel anybody's looking out for them. And here's a group or here's a gang or whatever that that, that want to, hey, you know, you know, come be with us. I'm telling you that stuff ends nowhere positive. It ends nowhere positive. Whether in a hospital or, 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 or in prison, 
It is nowhere positive. When you pick up a firearm and pull a trigger, there's nothing you can do to bring that bullet back. And the lives you impact, think about it if it was your family. What would happen if we just put our firearms down and we just wrapped our arms around each other and lifted each other up? So I made this statement earlier. I'm going to tell you now. Any young person out there that is in a situation they want out of, they want somebody to help. I'm telling you, you matter to me. And I know I, I, I may need help getting that message out. But if you let this police department know that you want out of a situation, uh, as, as the chief of police here, I work with a lot of different entities, a lot of different groups, grassroots, Boys and Girls Club, YM, YM, YMCA, United Way. There's a lot of people we partner with. If you want out of a situation you're in and you need help getting there, you call me and let me know. And I will do my dead level best to help you. I promise you that. I promise you that. Um, Marina, thank you. I didn't mean to go off on that. I apologize. Kevin, uh, what are you looking for in applicants? Kevin, let me tell you, um, we can teach you how to do all the, to write the reports, to drive the police car, to work, work the computer, to work all the gadgets, the taser and the OC spray, the fire. We can work, we can teach you how to do all that on what I'm looking for are people who want to come to this organization and care about other people. You have to have a passion for people. You have to care about other people. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to bring into this organization. Um, I think you get that, you know, from your people who mentored you, your family, your friends, your your uh, your faith, pastors, school teachers that make an impact. That's what I'm looking for. You come in here with a heart. You're going to have a great career as a police officer. You're going to see things that are hard and challenging. You're going to see community and society at its very worst. This job is not easy and it's not for everyone, but those who stick with it and dedicate to have a, uh, 20, 25 years of serving this community or serving any community, it's extremely, extremely rewarding. It's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. You wake up and you, you have the ability to make life better with every interaction you have. Uh, that, that, it's just, that means a lot. So when I talk about people being valued, that's the reason when I, when I talk about uh, that people join this organization, I value them. They're not just a number to me. They matter. They matter because I know what they're going to see. I know what they're going to give up and, and the long hours that they put in. But I also know how rewarding it can be and lives can be changed. I can tell you, you may not see it on the, uh, this, this year at the job. You may affect someone that five or six years later calls you or comes back and says, you changed my life by you giving me a break. Look, look at where I am today. I just I want this department to be known as a department that has a lot of compassion for our community. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. Um, Alvin, uh, Doctor, Doctor Long, character, courage, compassion, commitment. Com so, do all those words start with C? Is that on purpose, or did you have to? Did you Google that? Did you did you look that up in the old thesaurus? Um, Doctor Lyons, uh, Alvin is a huge. Um, supporter of community and police working together, breaking down barriers and have conversations. She's helped me uh, on the last couple of promotions for our assistant chief. Uh, she helps us, how do we craft messages? Do we talk to our community? What's important that we don't overlook? Um, she just brings another set of eyes and a huge heart to the table and has been very beneficial. Uh, and I know we talked a lot when we first started working together. Is this really what I, I ask her? Is this really something you want to get into? Because uh, it's demanding and you're going to be exposed. You're going to see a lot of different things. And it, some of it is not pretty that we deal with. Um, the health and wellness of officers are seeing such tragic events. They go home and go to sleep. A lot of us don't talk about to our wives and families, our kids, about what we see at work. We come back in and do it the next day and get it right. Right? And not make mistakes. That's hard. So it, it, we have to humanize this profession. We have to admit that we make mistakes. We have to admit sometimes we got to take a step back. We gotta admit sometimes we gotta slow things down and still give the best service that we possibly can to our citizens and our community. Uh, but she's a tremendous asset to have. I appreciate the work uh, that she does, uh, not only in the community, but with our department as well. And, and um, her counsel to me means a lot. I appreciate that. Um, she always uses big words though to, to mess with me. Uh, but thank you, Dr. Lyle, I appreciate that. Um, so we talked about uh, uh, our promotions, we've talked about our recruiting efforts. Um, homicides, uh, we did have a rough week. We had a homicide last Monday afternoon. We had a homicide, uh, uh, again, of a, a high school student on, on the Tuesday evening. 
and then uh, we had a homicide uh, Saturday. I'm sorry, Sunday afternoon. Um, in in September, so I try to look at kind of trends, and you know, I, I, it's hard to compare all of this year to hey, what are we seeing in December and January? So I looked at kind of like the last four months. I went back and looked at September, October, November, December of last year, right? The last was that the last quarter, September, October, the, la the last the last third of the year, mm -hmm. right? Four months of the year, the last third, um, how we did. We had 14 homicides in the city uh, last year. We had six in October. Um, I'm sorry, six in September, four in October, two in November, and two in December. So that's 14, right? 10, 14 for September, October, November. And this year, we've had six. Um, three of those were last week. We only had one in September, one in October, one in November, but we had three in December. Now, of those six, four are cleared by an arrest. One has active warrants on file. We just need to find this individual, which we're very, very close. We may have some good news by the end of the week. And the other, we have a strong suspect, and we're just pushing forward to bring the, put the missing pieces together. And let me stop there just for a second. I know that when I say we had one, we had one, those are numbers that I look at for trends and patterns. And are our strategies working, are our initiatives working, are we making a change? I know every one of those individuals that I say is a number is an individual, right? That they affect families, um, they affect loved ones, they affect our neighborhoods and our community. They affect this department, they affect this, this, uh, our, our city, right? So I, I do look about patterns and trends in our, our what's our clearance rate? What are we doing to, on, on our solvability, right? Currently, the Newport News Police Department has an 80% clearance rate for homicides. The national average is 62.3. 80% is unheard of. Now, for a smaller jurisdiction that might have four homicides a year and they solve three, that's at 75%. So, but departments that are our size, our structure, and, and our environment, 80%, that's unheard of. Um, I'm not comparing us to anybody else. I'm just telling you that the detectives are committed and have a compassion. We have structured this department to address gun violence when it occurs. What we need to do a better job at, not just the police department, but our city of Newport News, high school students, teachers, pastors, business owners, retirees, um, police officers, nurses, any profession you can think of that has a, a business here, anybody who lives here, is collectively, we need to do a better job of disrupting gun violence on the, on the, before it even starts. I don't believe that someone wakes up on a Monday and says, you know, I think I'm going to go join a gang today. I think they might join a group or a gang or affiliate because there's something missing in their life that they don't have. And that's why I talk about all of us wrapping our arms around each other and moving forward. Those decisions, those decisions can haunt you for the rest of your life. Two families lost young ones Tuesday night. One family that their child is deceased and the other that's been arrested. I'm going to tell you now, I know it is hard. We have a homicide support group here in the city um, that our detectives work with. Um, I know that anniversaries and holidays are extremely difficult probably none more than Christmas. So for everyone who's lost a loved one, I, I had a phone call this morning uh, from a family in New York. They lost a loved one here back in 2007, March. And they just called it, I don't, I don't want my loved one to be forgotten. And that hit me, that, that made an impact on me. I also talked to a mother who lost someone just last week. I know the holidays are hard. I know they are. And I know any arrest that we make is not going to bring anyone back. It may add a little small piece of closure, but I know it's challenging and difficult, and I want those families to know that they matter to me. That's why I go to every homicide that happens in this city. Now, I miss one or two. But for the most part, I'm at every homicide. Not to oversee and micromanage, but I need this department and this community to know that it matters. That it matters. Um, well, the five C's our department is looking for in our officers and leaders. Very, thank you, Dr. Lyons. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, the department's made a huge investment in technology. I think that's the future. Um, I don't want to go into all the stuff that we have, but uh, we were able to get results that we sent to the lab that may take six, seven, eight weeks. We're able to get those in now about 24, 48 hours. We trace every firearm that we recover. We've recovered over 800 firearms this year already. Um, I don't say that to brag. It's a lot of firearms on the street. There's way too many firearms on the street in circulation. There's way too many people that can't control their anger and frustration and make quick decisions by picking up a firearm and pulling the trigger. 
those same individuals, I'm sure if Mr. Gwynn was sitting here, would tell you, you know, they cry in the courtroom, right, because they made a quick, hesitant decision that took someone's life or hurt someone. And I appreciate our partnerships that we have with our Commonwealth Attorney and our schools, and I, I really appreciate the different entities. I was just on a walk, um, John, Ely with John Ely, our school board member, we just had a walk on Saturday. He helped organize. We had elected officials, um, had young people, right, kids, walking about uh, reducing the violence and, and reducing, putting down guns, reducing gun violence. Let us grow up in our communities and neighborhoods. Let it be safe. Um, that's impactful to me. That's impactful to me. So I think that is the solution. Conversation um, is getting there, but I think people want to see some action. I, I, I was at a meeting um, last week at Ivy Baptist Church where a group of individuals came together and look, talking about a safe space and opening up to young people, having kids come out and, and be part uh, in a place where they can be uh, um, feel safe, right? Uh, Dr. Breland talked about uh, achievable dreams and working in the community and having a, an area where people can come and feel safe and how many times do we open the doors and, 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 and see what kids take advantage of that. I think that's important. Um, but I just, I was appreciated to be invited to that meeting. Uh, it meant a lot. And to see different groups and entities come together, the whole discussion, I think, is, is, is very vital. And if we're going to change it, all those things have to come into play. Um, and I hope all is well. It's also incredible, incredibly heartbreaking. Yes, it is. It, it, any, any loss of life, especially at the hands of another. Absolutely. Um, so we talked about technology. We've made huge advances, advances there. I want this department to be also known for how progressive we are and looking at other ways, right? We, we talk to other chiefs and, and other departments, things that work and things that don't, things that they've tried, looking after action reports. So that good communication flowing, I think, is, is, is vital and hugely important. Uh, that We learn from each other uh, and talk about different strategies and good in, information. You know, individuals who decide to, to commit crimes, it, it's not just... Uh, this particular geographical area, right? They move back and forth. So we have to share information, partner together. Uh, we have to have investment. We got to put the right people in the right place. Leadership matters. We talked about that with our promotions, and I believe that's played a role in, in our in our clearance rates in this city. And I just I would like to see more and more people, um, certainly from from Newport News, join this department and help us, right? Change maker, right? Help us change things, and continue to help us to evolve and, and serve our citizens better. Um, you know, as we come to the holiday season, uh, I want to make sure, uh, or at least encourage people to drive safe. We've had uh, seven or eight uh, traffic fatalities that involved pedestrians, people run, trying to run across five or six lanes of traffic, wearing dark clothing in the middle of the night, people that had too much to drink and walking in the street, not crossing at crosswalks. Uh, I believe out of the, the seven or eight, only one has been the driver's fault. Uh, the majority have been pedestrians uh, in some of those situations I just described. Um, remember that now uh, the schools are on break for the Christmas holiday break, so there's going to be kids out um, enjoying the holiday, and, 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 and just please, please ask to drive careful. We get a lot of, I've uh, seen an increase in complaints on traffic enforcement, speeding, so it doesn't fall on deaf ears. Uh, we are about 45 officers short. I'm not able to have that dedicated traffic division that we had uh, at the, uh, last year and the beginning of this year, we've had some shortages, uh, some vacancies. So we're trying to do some overtime to address address our speeding. I want that to traffic division back. I still have the slots there. I just got to get officers in and trained before we, we, we backfill it. I've got to make sure that when the citizen dials 911, that they're going to get an officer to respond. That's our top priority. And we're always going to focus heavily, more heavily on our violent crime than anything else. But I, I, I want those community members to know that have called and concerns about speeding. We, we traded a traffic checkpoint the other day, I believe, on Warwick uh, to address some speeding, and we've got some overtime spots that have been dedicated to address that. So uh, I, I, it does not fall on deaf ears. I appreciate it. Um, so t technology, homicides, holiday promotion, recruiting. So uh, I want to share with you, um, we talked about the, dealing with the, the homicides that we had uh, last week. Uh, but this department also lost a value member of our organization. Um, Sergeant Jerry Luce, I was called early Sunday morning. It was notified that he passed away. Um, Sergeant Luce was uh, a, a veteran in this organization. 
Uh, he'd been here over 25 years, served his community, served his city. Um, he had a great sense of humor. He lightened the room. You knew when he was in the room. Um, we had He was one of the first guys I met, and, and we would go back and forth. Um, and we kind of grew closer probably over the last 12, 13 months, just some of our conversations that we had as we talked about trying to do make things better in our community. Um, he, he, he was a wealth of knowledge, uh, and he had a huge heart. Um, he made such an impact on on uh, this department in the community, and, and I'm not using her name out of respect, but so just her first initial, J, his significant other, um, I want you to know that um, you're not forgotten, that I'm thinking of you, our, our hearts go out to you, um, praying for you, and that we're going to wrap our arms around you so much that you're going to probably be like, Chief, you guys are, you guys are cramping me here, you're too much, um, but I want you to know that you matter. Um, Jerry mattered. He made a difference. He leaves behind his mother and father, a brother and a sister. Um, but Jerry was my friend. And um, I actually talked to an officer on Monday. Um, he just kind of broke down. And, you know, and that's the kind of closeness and brotherhood and relationship that we have. We care about one another. Um, and it's impacted this department. So out of respect, we will allow the family time to make some decisions. But we will have a memorial service to honor our, our fallen friend, um, Sergeant Luce, um, uh, because one, he deserves it, and, and two, it is the right thing to do. He served this city and this community as a valued member of this department and always will be. Um, so I pray that he rests in peace, and uh, my heart goes out to Jay and, and all of Jerry's family um, here in abroad. Um, our, our thoughts and prayers are with you. To the men and women, who work here, I know it's hard, and, and what I encourage you to do is lean on one another to talk about Jerry, remember the good times that we had with him, and uh, all the things, those that worked for him on his shift, um, those who worked with him, those that he mentored and helped along the way, those that just had conversations with him, you know, remember the good times, look out for one another, you never know what may trigger that, somebody may see something or say something that, that brings back a memory, um, but remember the good times. But it's okay to shed a tear, and it's okay, it's okay to have emotion. And I ask others to help pick up and put your arm around those that, that may be having a hard time at that particular moment. And it's okay. It's okay. We, um, we got the news early Sunday morning. Um, Sunday afternoon, I brought our command staff together, and Karen Witherspoon from our HR division in the city. Uh, and we have a direct liaison with um, Jerry's uh, family, so we're working with benefits. And, um, and then someone is connected with someone from our city. So uh, they actually met, I believe they met this morning, early this morning, and just made sure everybody was, was on the right track and we had good traction going on what we're trying to do. Uh, but that's important. So they, it, was, uh, it just, it, it's, anytime you lose someone like that, you know, and, I, and I, look, I know, uh, you know, with this pandemic, um, people that have suffered and known individuals and families that have had loss, you know, it's hard. Holidays are hard. Um, just remember, Right. Just remember, wrap your arms around each other. You never know what, hey, uh, I'm thinking of you, an arm around a shoulder, a wave, a smile, uh, how it can impact someone. Uh, so for the department, just take it day by day. There's no rush to get through anything. Take it day by day. Uh, Once you still continue to serve this community and the, the citizens, uh, be professional, show compassion and empathy, just like Jerry would, uh, like Jerry would want us to. Uh, and just don't forget our friend. Um, the other thing is, is um, you know, it is the holiday season. I want to wish all of the citizens here in Newport News a very Merry Christmas and a great holiday. Um, it's a special time of year. We're so blessed. Uh, all of us know individuals who may not be as fortunate, those that may be struggling, whether they're some type of medical condition or in the hospital or can't be around family or unable to travel or the, the, the money's a little bit tighter this year than before. You know, just remember one another. Um, I, I think that's one thing that's one of our best strengths in this city is that um, I see how people come together. Um, I see how people care about each other and reach out and just say thank you, thinking of you, we appreciate you. I can't tell you the number of pastors and uh, citizens who've called in and, and, and just said, hey, Chief, we're praying for the officers, we're praying for the department, we're praying for our city. That stuff goes a long way. I'm telling you, that goes a long way. That means a lot to people. And uh, so I, I appreciate I appreciate you, and I encourage our officers 
um, starting with me uh, and others, just to just to make sure that we're taking care of our community and taking care of each other. Right, mental health is real. Um, and make sure we're okay physically, right? Uh, but also need to make sure we're okay here and here, right? That we get those lined up and, and we do a good job. Did I miss anybody? Are we doing okay. Um, Annie had sent her condolences to to who us. did? Uh, Annie. Uh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Sending prayers to Annie. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Tia, thank you. You know, sometimes uh, pictures or and images are better than words. I, I appreciate that. Thank you, um, Annie. Thank you very much. Um, is there anyone above above Annie? No. Miss anybody? We're good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Uh, I, I appreciate. Uh, like you know. I'm still kind of learning. I've been doing this for a couple of years now as we have our discussions. It's still hard for me talking into this blue blue dot, um, but but I think it's important. I know there's a lot of hustle and bustle going around and people shopping. And you know, it was funny. I was talking to the assistant chiefs today and a couple of we got to get our we haven't got our Christmas gift yet. We got, um, uh, but it's a great it's a it's a great group of individuals. And I, I didn't know there's a lot of people preparing for Christmas. So. I uh, completely understand. You can look at this at some point, or even if you just chimed in for a little bit. Uh, I know it's a lot of hustle and bustle, but remember to take a deep breath, slow down, and just take a look around, right? Some fresh air, and then the holiday season, and and uh, New Year's right around the corner. I cannot believe how, how fast. Um, but we do have a lot to be thankful for. We do have a lot. We had a rough week last week, um, and there may be rough weeks in the future. We're just going to continue, right? We're going to stay steadfast, address each of those issues. I do want us to get as much involvement as we can to try to disrupt some of the violence that we've had in our city and really around the Hampton Roads area in our state. Um, but it will take it all hands on. And I know there's a lot of people doing a lot of different things, and it, it's really it's really heartwarming. It's really heartwarming to see. Um, so I'm not going to stay too long. Um, yeah, if anybody has any any direct questions, anything that I didn't didn't address, you'd like me to. I'll be glad to. I appreciate those that that took the time just to hang with us a little bit this evening. Um, I, I I do this to try to be as open and transparent as I can. You know, I don't want to give anything away on cases, but I try to touch on those if some individuals have questions. I don't want to uh, I don't want to miss anyone. Um, you know, but I just appreciate the relationship that we have with our community. I appreciate the hard work, the men and women, the detectives. We're here on the second floor of police headquarters. And I see detectives moving back and forth that are still here working. The officers that are on the street, I saw them early this morning. It was so cold out this morning. I saw officers out all bundled up, officers that are out at night taking calls at 2 and 3 in the morning. Um, I see you. And I just I appreciate the work that you do. Our forensics uh, processing crime scenes all hours of the night. Um, our detectives, our, our, our records, our civilians that are down in dispatch, the work that you do. Um, you guys do some phenomenal stuff, and I appreciate you. I appreciate you. It is a blessing to work at such a great organization for such a great city. We have a, a lot of great partners. Uh, we are blessed to have a, a city manager, mayor, city council to work closely with this department. Now, they ask hard questions. They ask hard questions, but that, that's what they should do. Uh, and I appreciate the ability to sit down and have conversation, right? To, to talk about here's what we're doing, and you know, wait, why haven't we done more of this? And why have we done that? And here's the reason why we are doing this, but we got to schedule for this date. Those things matter, and, and having that relationship it is very, very beneficial. It is a great relationship that we have with our elected officials and in this city. Um, and whether I'm talking with Councilman Harris about youth football and what youth are doing, we both. Both have a, a huge heart for, for our youth of the city. Our others about, I was at uh, Friday, Saturday, I had five events in one day, and, and we were able to hit everyone. And when I say we, me and Chief Grinstead, we went to everyone, and we were able to push in uh, a little bit of time for breakfast. But we started off with uh, up in the Denby area, seeing Councilman uh, Sharon Scott's uh, food, uh, food collection and food drive, and all the work that was going on there. We got the... Go by there. Uh, Congressman Bobby Scott was there. Uh, from there, we were able to go down. Uh, we saw one of our canine dogs getting a, a donated uh, bulletproof vest for the canine dog at Smoke. Great partner with our, our police department. After we 
uh, left there, we were able to go over to uh, Dr. Cherry's event, um, uh, is our vice mayor, right? It's a toy giveaway down in, in Lincoln Park. Um, it was laid out. It was beautiful. I got to, he got some time throwing a little bit of football, playing a little football with a young man who told me he, how much he loved the sport, and we got to interact a little bit. I got my picture with Santa Claus. From there, we went over to the um, Main Street Library and got to see the train ride. I got a, a, a president of my fan club. She looked to be about four, three or four years old. I got a great uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer ornament that they were doing arts and crafts she made for me and tugged at my pants and gave it to me. Um, they, had, they were making s'mores and train rides and popcorn. and Santa. It was just really great to interact with them. And then from there, uh, we went to the community walk that we had down at uh, Anderson Park. Uh, Councilman Jenkins was there, um, uh, school board member uh, John Ely, and students, right? Kids, youth, uh, walking together. Um, uh, Aub Aubrey, we've had a lot of conversations. Uh, Black Lives Matter 757, we have a lot of conversations about bullying and gun violence and how do we do things better, how do we continue to move forward and uh, have conversations and work together. Uh, but he marched along with us. So it was just it was just great um, to see different resources come out together. There's a lot of people committed to see a change. And, and not just in this city. There's a lot of people committed to see a change. And we just have to keep pushing forward. It's easy to quit. It's easy to quit. It is hard to make improvements. It's hard to change. That's hard work. It's heavy lifting. But the reward is so great. The reward is so great. Um, Annie Sins says that kids just make Christmas perfect. They absolutely do. Um, they absolutely do. Um, value each other. I'm going to get off here and, and let you all enjoy your evening. And it could be that maybe I need to do some Christmas shopping. I don't know. Um, but I thank you all for spending a little bit of time with me. Um, I love you guys. This means the world to me that we're able to spend some time together. I really hope I didn't miss any. Um, we'll go back through and take a look at it. So God bless. Um, We'll do this again in January. I want to wish all of you a very, very happy holiday season. I want to wish all of you a very, very Christmas. Happy New Year. Look out for each other. Be safe. And we'll do this again next year. Take care.